This is our fourth devotional on this topic, faith, hope, and love, the bedrock of Christian community. And this morning we're talking about love. There's probably no passage in the Bible that speaks more of love than 1 Corinthians 13. Let me uh, read uh, this uh, chapter and then we'll make some comments on it. Paul writes and he says this, if I speak with the eloquence of men and of angels, but have no love, I become no more than blaring brass or crashing cymbal. If I have the gift of foretelling the future and hold in my mind not only all human knowledge, but the very secrets of God, and if I also have that absolute faith which can move mountains, but have no love, I amount to nothing at all. If I dispose of all that I possess, yes, even if I give my own body to be burned, but have no love, I achieve precisely nothing. This love of which I speak is slow to lose patience. It looks for a way of being constructive. It is not possessive. It is neither anxious to impress, nor does it cherish inflated ideas of its own importance. Love has good manners and does not pursue selfish advantage. It is not touchy. It does not keep account of evil or gloat over the wickedness of other people. On the contrary, it is glad with all good men when truth prevails. Love knows no limit to its endurance, no ending to its trust, no fading of its hope. It can outlast anything. It is in fact the one thing that still stands when everything else has fallen. In this life, we have three great lasting qualities, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them is love. Faith and hope are based on the objective truth of God's word. We believe in what God has said and we wait for his promises to be fulfilled in Christ. But love is the greatest because it is seen in the sacrificial action of God toward us in sending his only son to die in our place. There's no greater love than that. In the New Testament, specifically in Paul's and John's writings, love is the central idea of what being a Christian is all about. Such verses as these, they will know that you are my disciples by the love you have for one another, Jesus said. My, how they love one another is the expression that non-believers had of the church in the book of Acts. And John says this, whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. The New Testament writers saw the action of love for each other as the essence of Christian community. This was groundbreaking. In the Roman and Greek worlds, love or Christian love or agape, which is the Greek word, was not seen as a virtue. In fact, the word was seldom used. This is why Paul takes a whole chapter to describe what this kind of love was. Again, you think through what he says in 1 Corinthians 13. This love of which I speak is slow to lose patience. It always looks for a way of being constructive. It is not possessive. It is neither anxious to impress, nor does it cherish inflated ideas of its own importance. You notice as you read through 1 Corinthians 13, you notice that love is described in verbal terms. They're all verbs, they're all action words. It talks about what love does what agapao, the, the Greek word, the, the kind of sacrificial self-giving love looks like, what it does, it's described in action words. It's the action that we take towards others that's based on their needs, not what we think, that, that, that shows our concern and care for them. And this kind of love is always at a cost. It's, it's sacrificial to ourselves. 
It's not something that comes easily. It's something that we decide to do. And whatever the cost is, we, we assume that cost in order to do it. It's service. It's Jesus washing his disciples' feet and saying, I've set you an example. As I have loved you, so you are to love one another. In other words, we love each other like this because this is the way that Jesus loved us. This is the way that God has loved us through Christ. Without love, Paul says, there's nothing. That's why it's the greatest or it's the most important part of Christian community. You know, during this time of home confinement, try to find ways to show love to your family, to your spouse, to your parents, to your kids, etc. Whoever is there with you, try to find ways to show the action of love towards others. Reach out to others in the body who have needs and be to them what they need in love. Take that action. Begin to think about how love as actions toward others cost you something. Th think about the, the cost that to love someone requires, and then you begin to understand the depths of Christian love. And take some time to meditate on the actions of love that God has taken toward you. Think about this. When this time is over, how can love become my motivation for all my actions towards others? How will thinking about that and, and having love be the motivation for my actions, how will that change me? Christian community, who we are as the body in Christ is built on a bedrock, a foundation of faith, hope and love. And as these realities become more and more real to us, our community will flourish with the presence of God and through us, his grace will be seen by others and they will be drawn to him and he will receive the glory. Faith, hope, love. The greatest is love and these are the bedrock of Christian community. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for these mornings as we've thought about these three great ideas that you have given us of faith, hope, and love. Lord, as these become real in our lives, they become the foundation on which our community here at Village Church is, is built together, built up in, in love and caring for each other, and becomes a, a witness, an example to the community around us. Lord, may we think about these things. Work in us to create in us the people that you desire us to be. Lord, thank you for this morning and all the things that you have for us, the opportunities to show love this day. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.